a brief statement. This is Janos Tarapakis. He's from DN25. We've just spent the last two hours with Julian. Um, you know, for the life of me, I can't understand why Julian Assange is in jail, having committed no crime, with a family here that he can come and live with, that uh, a bail ought to be given immediately if the extradition order isn't dropped. Now, Julian had uh, harassment today. Uh, he goes to court tomorrow and they searched his cell this afternoon just before he came down to see us. Um, I, this uh, plague of malice that emanates from the Crown Prosecuting Service to Julian Assange must stop immediately. So thank you very much and uh, Janus would say a few words to you. I came here to visit my great friend and fighter for press freedom for you folks, you the journalists, because you are on Donald Trump's hit list next. I came here to give him courage and I ended up receiving a lot of strength from him. Julian is in a very dark place. You have to publicize this. He's in, a so in solitary confinement. Today, for instance, he will spend 22 hours on his own in the cell. The only two hours of the 24-hour cycle that he's not going to spend on his own was with us. When he sees people like us today, he doesn't even get the, one, the half hour, the 30 minutes of exercise in an enclosed space. He doesn't even get that. For six months, he's been asking for, uh, as a prisoner, his right to exercise in the gymnasium with the other prisoners. He has been denied that. So how is he? He's a force of nature. Because I can tell you that I would not be able to even open my mouth and utter a single sentence. His, uh, his mind is working overtime. He's constantly thinking of the merits of the case. Uh, it really does not matter what you and I think about Julian Assange. He's only being charged with journalism. The only reason why he's in there is because he embarrassed those who committed crimes against humanity, war crimes. People who are out there profiting, not just being free, but profiting, while the person who exposed them, who allowed the international media, the liberal media, to know what happened in Afghanistan, to know what happened in, in Iraq. Huh? That person is now rotting in there. We have to stop this extradition in the interests of 300 years of modernity, 300 years of trying to establish human rights and civil liberties in the West, around the world. Thank you. Um, this is the Reporters Without Borders. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Christophe Reporters Without Borders. The question is not, are you part of the family or not? Do you like Julian Assange or not? The question is that tomorrow, in this courtroom, journalism will be in danger. Because if Assange would be extradited to the US, it would be the sign that journalism is considered as espionage. And it would endanger all journalists who want to cover the lies of governments, whatever the country, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in other countries. And of course, this is a question of press freedom. What happens here goes beyond the question of an individual fate. We have also to say that uh, Assange has been politically and legally persecuted and that is, this has to stop now and that he needs to enjoy the solidarity of journalists because this is the future of journalism that uh, will be in danger tomorrow. Anybody wants uh, individual interviews we can do a few now. Um, so.
ask you questions over the other day. Like, can I just start one? Yeah. Like as Yannis, could you quickly yeah. interrupt as, 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 as a father, yeah. as a father to, what are your feelings uh, today, before having you start, visited Judy? John, uh, John, can I get you off the street? Oh, right. well, just to start, I'm not on yet. very upsetting to see a, a son who uh, has brought only truth and benefits to very many people, millions of people. It's very upsetting to see Julian incarcerated in a maximum security prison with very little freedom, uh, 20 hours a day in his cell, and harassed the day before his trial with uh, a cell search. This is a di oh, how to express yourself. I mean, the torrent of malice that issues forth from the Crown Prosecuting Service over the last 10 years in a gradually increasing trajectory of intensity, culminating in Julian being dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy illegally, the revocation of his asylum not done. It's a judicial and legal process to go through to revocate asylum. The procedural distortions, malfeasance, lies and the uh, changing of the record of and the destruction of the records of in the Crown Prosecuting Service and the Swedish Prosecuting Authority are crimes. Julian has committed no crimes, and yet those responsible for the administration of law constantly break their own regulations, their own agreements and covenants international with the United Nations. The United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention has declared that Julian be, that is Julian arbitrarily detained by Sweden and the UK and ought to be paid compensation. Nils Melzer, the United Nations Rapporteur on Torture, has made it plain to all of us that Julian is a victim of psychological torture extending over a period of 10 years that hasn't stopped yet. John, so, how does Julian feel right now heading into tomorrow? I didn't ask him how. I can't answer, you know, how he feels. Or I can tell you how I feel, but I, I don't. Uh, well, it's a distressing circumstance to have a son of a gentle nature, a very strong and deep intellect, an integrity of being an honesty of outlook, the capacity to maintain integrity under great pressure over 10 years, to see Julian in a maximum security institution in a cell 20 hours a day amounting very close to solitary confinement. It's more than distressing. Did you offer him any words um, before, you know, ahead of tomorrow, start of the long trial process? Did you give him any advice or words of support? At all? Mm, I, I don't give advice, but uh, I did say that uh, the whole family will be there and we'll, uh, the, the stronger the oppression against Julian, the greater the persecution against Julian, like any father, this increases the determination to fight until he's free. It is in my country, amongst my friends, the common circumstances that if your children are in trouble, you give everything you've got to ensure that they're free. That's in my country. I imagine it's the same for all fathers everywhere.
It's a, it's a long way to go, but what's your... Uh, you spoke about this before. What are you like? What's your expectations well, you can drive of the outcome? Me. You're a twat. Yeah, yeah I remember that car. My expectations, Sorry, I take, that, a, take each day as it comes and fight the battle but with whatever intensity message. I can grow <laughs> yeah, within that's myself. That's all right, because I'll remember each that. Day as it comes. What, and if, yeah, if uh, Julian is extradited, what do you think? What would the impact of that be if he, if he is sent back to the to US on yourself and on him? Well, on him it would be his death. On me. Hey, do you know what? I might be the end. Same for his mother, his brother, his sisters, his children, his lovers, his nephew, his niece, his cousins. All of us. Right now, what do you think uh, people should be doing to bring awareness to this case and showing their support for Julian? I know back in the United States, uh, there's a series of actions taking place all next week, peaceful protests um, in D.C. to show support for him. Do you think that more of that should be taking place to, to show that the public disagrees with this uh, potential extradition? Well, in, in Switzerland, they've issued a humanitarian visa to do him, that he can come there for three months and seek solace and succour. In Germany, there's 35 cities hold each week a vigil for Julian. In Australia today, there's a massive rally in Sydney where John Pilger and many other prominent people speak. So there's a groundswell of support. It's a historical moment for everybody, globally to assert their rights, to be able to discuss amongst each other how you feel and read information to make decisions. You don't have to read it, you can hear it or watch it on TV. But good decisions come from having good information.